In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the common hand tools that you need to be familiar with in your design and manufacture course. On the screen, we have a list of common hand tools, including measuring and marking out tools and other common tools that you would use in the workshop. So let's have a look at some of these tools. At the top left hand corner, we have calipers. Um, we've got two different types of calipers. We've got external calipers, which are the ones at the top here, and they would be used for measuring the diameter of a piece of wood that you're turning on a woodworking lathe. We also have internal calipers, which would be used for measuring, uh, let's say, the internal diameter of a bowl that's been gouged out on the end of a woodworking lathe. We have a rule used for measuring um, uh, we have marking gauges, two different types. We've got your standard marking gauge with one spur and we've got a mortise and tenon gauge with two spurs. Obviously the mortise and tenon gauge would be used for marking two lines uh, or two scores on wood uh, when you're marking out a mortise hole or a tenon and a mortise and tenon joint. Um, the standard marking gauge has one spur for marking one line when you're marking out uh, your woodworking joints. When it comes to marking out metal, we have a centre punch for putting a dent in a piece of metal prior to drilling it. Uh, that dent also helps to locate the drill when you drill your hole. We have a scriber, um, which is used for scribing uh, lines on metal. Both uh, these tools are made from tool steel, which is much harder than mild steel. We have dividers, look very much like compasses. Um, for marking arcs and circles on metal. Um, one of the legs has to be held in position and you do that by centre punching the metal where the centre of the arc or circle is and that will hold it in position when you scribe your arc in your circle. We have a tri-square for marking lines at right angles to an edge or a face on a piece of wood and we'll have an engineer square which is the equivalent to a tri-square when working with metal. Both of these squares can also be used for checking that component parts are joined together at right angles. Okay, on the screen we have um, a range of saws, chisels and hammers. Um, we have four saws. Um, some of these saws are used for cutting through wood and some of them are used for cutting through metal. Um, so at top left hand corner, we have a coping saw, um, which consists of a, a thin blade, um, metal frame, and in this case, plastic handle. And it would be used for cutting curves uh, in sheet material, plastic or wood. We then have a tenon saw, um, which has a wide blade um, used for doing straight saw cuts through wood. We have a hacksaw and a junior hacksaw. Um, used for cutting metal. We've got two different types of chisels. Um, the first chisel here you should be familiar with um, and that's called the bevel edge chisel. It has a bevel edge running along its side and at the front and it's a versatile chisel and it's very good for cutting um, acute angles uh, in woodworking joints. On the right hand side we've got um, what's called a mortise chisel um, which has a much thicker um, blade. Uh, it also, also has a, a ferrule which joins, which helps to strengthen the joint between the handle and the blade and also got a ferrule at the end of the handle. Uh, and a mortise chisel needs to be strong um, for cutting and levering out waste wood from a mortise hole. Next we have three hammers. We've got the ball peen hammer. Um, often used in, uh, when working with metal. Uh, the, the ball end can be used for uh, shaping the end of a rivet, for example. Uh, we have a cross peen hammer used uh, often when um, putting pins and nails into wood. Uh, the peen end can be used if it's quite a small pin and, uh, to help you get uh, started when you're hammering the pin in. And we have your claw hammer uh, which is often used in joinery work 
uh, both for hammering in nails and the coil end for removing nails. On this slide we have two mallets and we have four planes. Uh, both mallets would be used for doing similar jobs for striking the end of a chisel uh, when chiseling wood. Um, we have your standard wooden mallet and we have uh, your hide mallet. Now, the reason it's called a hide mallet is because the head of the mallet is made from leather rather than wood. We have four different types of planes. Uh, planes are used for cutting thin shavings of wood um, down to a line. Um, we have the jack plane, which is the first plane here, and it's recognisable because of the blade or the sole. No, the blade, the sole of the plane, which extends beyond the handle, and it's the biggest of all of the planes. That's in contrast to the smoothing plane, where the, the sole stops at the handle. Uh, the smallest plane in the workshop that you'll use is called a block plane, and a block plane can be used for detailed planing, um, possibly where you're planing the end grain on a, a, a woodworking joint. At the bottom right hand corner we have a, a picture of a rebate plane. A rebate plane can be used for cutting a groove or a rebate on the end of a piece of wood. It has a blade and two fences and each fence is, can be used to set the width and depth for the rebate. On the next screen we have examples of different drill bits. We have a twist drill, uh, which I'm sure you would all recognise, um, used for drilling holes in wood and metal. We have a Fostner bit, used for drilling bigger diameter holes in wood. We have countersink bits, used for countersinking the top of um, a hole, whether it's been drilled in wood or metal. Uh, I think you can see the example that the top one here is for metal, the bottom one here is for wood. We have a centre drill, um, which is used in a metal working lathe for centering the end of a piece of metal prior to drilling it on a metal working lathe. We have uh, examples of files here uh, for filing metal. Um, and these files will have different um, blades on them, um, and that it's, the, it's the shape of the blade that, determ that determines the name of the file, so you get what are called flat files round files, half round files, triangular files, knife files. At the bottom right hand corner we've got a picture of a handwriter for pairing the bottom of a woodworking joint. On this screen we have pliers for tightening or loosening nuts or for cutting cable. We have a pop riveter for, um, for um, joining two sheets of metal together using pop rivets. We have screwdrivers, um, and you get two different types of screwdrivers. You've got your flat-headed screwdriver and your star-headed screwdriver, or Phillips screwdriver. And the, the head of the screwdriver obviously has to match the head of the screw. We have tin snips um, for cutting sheet metal. We have folding bars, which can be put in a vise to um, help with folding sheet metal. On the final screen here we have a picture of a, a tap and a die. The tap is used for, is made from high carbon steel and is used for cutting internal thread uh, in a hole. The, the split die or the die is used for cutting external thread on a rod of metal. We have a nail punch, looks very similar to a centre punch, but the end is flat and it's used for punching the head of a nail below the surface of uh, a piece of wood. And we have a bradle, uh, which is similar to a centre punch. It has a point on the end and you can put a, a dent or the beginnings of a hole um, prior to drilling a hole in a piece of wood. Okay, so these are all of the tools, uh, or common tools that you should uh, know about uh, prior to you sitting your exam in your design and manufacture course. Thank you for listening.